Hello and welcome to Writer's Blockbuster. My name is Creed, and I can remember the day that horror became my favorite genre. It was 2009, and I went to Blockbuster looking for a new game to play, and I came home with an Xbox 360 game called Dead Space. From the moment I inserted the disc, I was hooked. The terror, the imagery, and most of all the story of the game was too intriguing for me not to explore it to the fullest. Although, I was too afraid to play alone, so I had my friend Ian come over and play for me while I absorbed every detail from the safety of the couch. Well, just a little while ago, the Dead Space remake came out, and I was able to relive so many memories and scares, and while I was researching that game, I also came across a 1991 movie that shares the same title, and it even stars Brian Cranston. This movie is a terrible remake of Roger Corman's Forbidden World, and while it is absolutely atrocious, it was also somewhat entertaining in the way that only awful movies can be. So exit your relaxation pods and try not to get contaminated as we talk about what happens in Dead Space. Also, there will be spoilers in this breakdown, so you've been warned. We open to see a lab assistant named Joe cut his thumb while working with some chemicals. He hears a sizzling sound and checks on a running experiment. He quickly pages his boss, Dr. Darden, who comes running to help. When he gets into the lab, they find Joe covered in welts and in critical condition, having been exposed to the experiment and quickly succumbing to some kind of virus. We then cut to Commander Steve Krieger. He's enjoying some R&R, but gets interrupted by his assistant Tin Pan. Why are you always mad at Steve? They've received an SOS, but just as the message is requesting help, it cuts out. En route to the distress signal, the commander's ship is attacked by three vessels. We watch as the ships battle, and it's pretty funny because the footage they used is the exact same footage that we previously saw in Forbidden World. And while researching why that was, I learned that both of those movies actually took the footage from the 1980 film Battle Beyond the Stars. So yeah, we know how the fight goes. The unnamed pirates are destroyed, and Commander Steve and Tin Pan come out victorious. I'm really sad. They arrive on planet Phoebos and enter the base. Steve introduces himself to Dr. Emily Stote, who is the head of research, and Dr. Marissa Salinger, who's the head of genetics. They inform the commander that the signal was a false alarm, and there is currently no immediate danger. The commander and Tin Pan head back to their ship, but find that it is currently inoperable. What's happening? That was my father. The doctors inform Steve that there will be a meeting in the conference room, and on their way, they end up telling him that this base is used for genetic experiments. In the hall, we meet a man named Tim, and in the conference room, we are introduced to the rest of the staff as well. Jill Tolman, Sal Dickens, and Devin Latham, who we're told is the sole survivor of an incident on Astro Lab 6. The goal of this base is to find a cure for the Delta 5 virus, which immediately puts Steve on edge. We learn that Dr. Stallinger sent the distress call, but none of the other scientists believe that the situation was classified as an emergency. Marissa and I have discovered that the only way to combat an aggressive virus like Delta 5 is to create an even more aggressive virus. One that will single out and destroy Delta 5, which renders our immune system so helpless and yet coexist with our benign cells in a symbiotic relationship. Yeah. Although the only real cure is to subscribe right now to Writer's Blockbuster. That's right, it's a cure. Everybody knows that that's a cure. I'm a doctor. Uh, I'm, I'm the one who knocks. Uh, yeah. Yeah. While trying to create this virus, they instead creating what Stallinger calls a monster. They created a metamorphic mutant when the virus continuously adapted and changed, becoming something far larger and far more dangerous. I think it's time I took a look at your... monster. They head to the lab to see the metamorph, and while they're discussing what to do, it morphs again and breaks from its case. It attaches to Devon, crawling up through her nose before disappearing. She's rushed to surgery, but it's clear that Dr. Darden is more concerned about the metamorph than Devon herself. For some reason, Steve is allowed in the surgical room with the doctors, but 
What do I know? Maybe he's freakishly clean or something. Who knows? Devin begins spasming beneath the cover, and when the doctors remove the sheet, a creature erupts from her stomach. Steve shoots at the creature, but it escapes out of the surgical room. That's what you call a muscle spasm? That's what I call science. The crew gather together to discuss what to do, and Tim wonders if the creature could be befriended and released onto the planet, but Stallinger shuts him down quickly, informing us that the creature's sole reason to exist is to kill. And Dr. Darden tells us that the creature will be able to continue to evolve only if it can latch onto another living organism. Sal, Steve, Tin Pan, and Stallinger head out to close the air vents to hopefully contain the metamorph. Tolman and Tim head into the control room to hopefully get a read on which vents the creature has escaped into, but their system is slow and not very precise. While Steve and Tin Pan are alone, we learn more about the Astro 6 accident. An unavoidable biological experiment got loose in the lab, and there was no other option than to nuke the entire facility. Commander, have you asked yourself why Dr. Darden doesn't terminate this experiment? I know you farted. While Sal is closing a vent, the metamorph suddenly springs out and latches onto him. Salinger picks up his gun, and once she has a clean shot, she hits the little bugger, sending it fleeing back into the vents. Sal's face is cut up, and he collapses. Dr. Darden announces that Sal's been infected, and his blood isn't circulating properly, and that the man will soon be dead. The crew decide to split into pairs so that they can get some rest. Tim and Tolman pair up, and Tim gives one of the most awkward shoulder rubs I've ever seen. Just give it a try. I want to do this for you. Try to relax. Never heard that one before. Jill. Okay. Okay. While Darden and Stote are checking on Sal's progression, Darden continuously coughs. It's revealed that he is infected with the Delta 5 virus, which is a death sentence unless he can somehow find the cure. While she's sleeping, Salinger has a dream. She washes her face before a shirtless Steve takes her into his arms and they smooch all over. But when she turns, she sees Steve is covered in welts and screams herself awake. A fully clothed Steve then runs over to comfort her, and a moment later, the metamorph busts in, but is scared off after a few gunshots. The rest of the crew is woken up, and we see that Sal's imminent death has progressed significantly. Steve and Solinger try to hunt down the metamorph. They enter a room that is venting atmosphere, and see that the metamorph has evolved and grown. They take a few shots, but the bullets don't seem to have any effect. The metamorph breaks through a wall, and the duo rush back into the hallway. Steve then decides that he and Tin Pan will take the creature down. He's a fool if he thinks he can stop it. Steve and Tin Pan head outside, but are told that they will only have about 20 minutes in the external atmosphere before Steve will die. They find the metamorph on a ridge and take a few shots, but the creature is still unaffected. Steve tries to climb the mountain, for some reason, but he falls. Tin Pan gets Steve into a cave, telling the commander to get some rest until the storm passes, and then like 10 seconds later, the metamorph attacks again, forcing the duo to flee back outside. And at this point, it must have been at least 20 minutes into movie time, but I guess we're just forgetting about that whole plot point now. Tolman then heads outside to try and help them. She grabs Steve to escort him inside while Tin Pan begins to brawl with the metamorph, but that just doesn't go well. The metamorph flees into a vent, but not before grabbing Tolman and dragging her inside with it. Steve makes it back alone. Tim then checks the schematics to see where the main vent leads, and discovers that it leads into the control room itself. The crew reconvene inside the medical room, but are startled when Tolman stumbles in, 
her face disfigured with welts and wounds. She begs to be put down, and Steve does the job. Tim heads into the control room, and Stallinger follows, trying to stop him. Inside, we see what has become of the metamorph. Tim is grabbed and killed, and Stallinger runs out. In the medical room, Darden has the idea to use his Delta V infected blood and inject it into the metamorph, hoping that he can weaponize his illness and use it to kill the creature. Steve and Stallinger return to the control room, finding Tim unconscious and covered in webs. Steve is tossed around by the monster, and most of this fight is spent crawling around on the control room floor. He tells Stallinger to run before bashing at the metamorph with a pipe. He then rolls and picks up his gun, but we are all super surprised when the bullets still have no effect. Darden and Stoat stumble in with a dart gun full of Delta V blood. Steve runs to help them, but Stoat is grabbed by the metamorph, and then Steve just pushes Darden into the creature. The metamorph smashes through the control room door, leaving Steve alone with the corpses and the guns full of blood darts. He wanders down the hall and finds the metamorph collapsed. He steps closer, but the creature isn't dead. Solinger sees the door to the medical room open and hears something squelch and move, but she can't see what it is. She screams for Steve and he rushes in, but he's grabbed by a smaller segment of the metamorph that apparently, like, ripped away from the corpse or something. Anyway, he throws the creature off of him and shoots it with a blood dart, causing the thing to suddenly burst into flame. <laughs> this movie, man. This movie. Steve walks to the panicking Solinger, and they embrace. We then cut to some time later and see Steve on a ship with a repaired tin pan. He walks to the relaxation room where Solinger is waiting. She tells the commander that she wants to stick with him from now on. And that's where the movie ends. This movie, man, this was an absolute mess. As I mentioned at the beginning, this was a remake of the 1982 film Forbidden World, but where Forbidden World is an original story with lots of love and incredible practical effects, Dead Space seems to be the complete opposite. The story changes were lackluster, the practical effects were incredibly few and pretty freaking lame all in all, and most of the beats felt rushed and poorly thought out. Every time the metamorph attacked, the camera just cut away giving us the excuse that it simply escaped. And I just started laughing when Commander Steve continued to shoot at it, despite seeing multiple times throughout the film that his bullets were beyond useless. This movie was clearly just a quota project, something that was needed to fill a Showtime slot, with priority on finishing it quickly instead of finishing it properly. I felt like Brian Cranston was the only real redeeming thing in this film, and his death alone just made me crack up. But it's really hard to say if I've just got Brian Cranston bias, or if he was actually good in this film. Or I guess it could be a little from both. Overall, I'd say just don't watch this movie. Save yourself the hour doing anything else, or watch the original inspiration over this cheap recreation. If you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on the next video. And if you'd like to see the other movies that I've covered, then check out the breakdown playlists. But yeah, I'm gonna go play some Dead Space now and have a great time. Bye bye! Where's my money? He can't keep getting away with it! Where were the other drugs? You're goddamn right.